So this week on September 11th, it will be the day that Unity celebrates its World Day of Prayer. Uh, Unity's World Day of Prayer was started 12 years ago uh, on the anniversary of the events of September 11th by ministerial students at Unity Village who sought to create some event to honor the events from the year before. We all remember that day. You know, it's one of those days that's forever defined in history, and we ask ourselves, where were you when that event happened? There are other events, too. Where were you when the Challenger shuttle exploded? Where were you maybe when JFK or Martin Luther King were assassinated? Events in our history, tragedies and trauma, are often marked by the where were you question. But that day on September 11th in 2001 was the day that Silent Unity, Unity 24-hour prayer service line, for the first time in its over 100 plus year history, might not have answered all the calls. They were so overwhelmed. Silent Unity was Unity's birth. Unity started as a prayer ministry before it evolved into this movement that touches millions of lives around the world with its, its centers and churches and publications like the Daily Word. Unity started as a prayer ministry. And this was in the late 1800s, so there was no phoning in. There was no emailing your request. It was handwritten letters sent in. Letters that were read, especially, mostly, by uh, co-founder Myrtle Fillmore and her team, and they would, they, would, they would pray and write a response back and send it back to the person. So you know, sometimes we get impatient when we don't get an email back the day of. <laughs> Remember the letter writing days? Yeah. But September the 11th, 2001, Silent Unity was overwhelmed. And the way Silent Unity works, it's, it's a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year prayer service. You can call anyone at 2.37 in the morning. If you need someone to sit in prayer with you, you can call Silent Unity, 1-800-NOW-PRAY, or pray now. Now pray, thank you. Anytime literally any time. And the way this works is that, you know, people take shifts. People work in shifts. When you're a ministerial student, and both Reverend Jennifer and I and almost any other Unity minister that's been through seminary at Unity Village, we, that's part of our training. We get to man the prayer lines sometimes. It was probably one of the most transformative experiences of my ministerial training to, to answer that phone and to hear someone either celebrating the joy or at their wit's end. And this is their last, perhaps, hope. Someone who is in so much pain and they don't know where else to turn. It changes you. But that day, there were so many calls. They had to call in everyone from every shift. They had to open up some extra rooms and plug in some more phone lines and still... They were overwhelmed. It might have been a day where the rest of us witnessing the events and those to follow the subsequent days, maybe we ourselves questioned prayer. Maybe questioned if prayer works. Maybe we've all had situations and traumas and tragedies and untold and speakable events in our own lives that make us question, does prayer work? Why do we pray? It's God listening. Here's the thing about prayer. In this unity context, pray is not about asking God to listen. Pray is not asking God to intervene. Prayer is about expressing the truth that we are walking, breathing, living manifestation of God. Unity author 
Eric Butterworth in his book, Universe's Calling, says, prayer is not something we do to God. It is an experience from our, of our own God potential. We do not pray to God. Rather, we pray from a consciousness of God. We do not pray to God. We pray from a consciousness of God. The first time I heard that, my response was, huh? I don't understand. What do you mean pray from God? Pray from a consciousness of God? I thought the idea of prayer was, was, was to ask for something, was to, was to ask for change. No. What I've come to learn is prayer is simply us expressing that truth, that the very consciousness of God, the very allness of God, is our essence. It's who we are. And we got to live it. And it's understandable when we forget sometimes. There's a lot going on in the world. A lot. A lot of little things, a lot of big things. <coughs> things that we might annoy us and we can overlook, and things that change the very fabric of who we are forever. Here's a small, silly example. I mentioned earlier our daughter celebrating uh, 14 years this month. And a while back, we were, I think, picking up Jennifer from the airport. And Joy said to me, I'm really excited to see her. It's a shame we couldn't like just go right in and be there to greet her as soon as she steps off the plane. And I said, yeah, I miss those days. She goes, wait, you could actually do that at one point in time? <laughs> There's an entire generation that has no concept of what life was before those events. No concept, but we know, we remember. Prayer is an opportunity for us to express our truth. And our truth is best summarized by Unity's first two basic principles. There's one power, there's one presence, it is God. And the second principle is that very one power and that one presence, that is the essence of who we are, of what we are. And in unity, what we call prayer, we call it affirmative prayer. Affirmative prayer simply reminds us of that truth. So that when we are in a situation that we're overwhelmed, we're at a wit's end, we don't know where to turn and we want to get out of it, we simply use affirmative prayer to remind us, you know what? That one power, that one presence, that is God, the very consciousness of oneness that unites us all, that is behind what we can see with our eyes and our five senses, that is who we really are. So I like to say prayer comes in two forms. We can practice it and we can live it. Because the obvious question that comes to your mind is, well, how do we pray from a consciousness of God? How does that look? What does that look like? Glad you asked. <laughs> because there's a thing I love about unity. You know, unity provides an answer for your questions. And not just a vague answer, a practical, specific one. Unity has a five-step prayer method that you can use to pray from a consciousness of God. Five steps. I'm not saying this is the only way you can do it or have to do it. But I'm saying that sometimes, for me, when I'm in a place where it's coming so fast and it's so overwhelming and it's so huge, I need something practical. I need a checklist. I need something that my logical, intellectual mind can wrap itself around and put into action. So Unity has this five-step prayer method. The first step is relaxation. And what relaxation simply means is allowing yourself to be here now. To quiet the mind. And if you ever try to stop your mind from thinking? <laughs> Works great, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, not so much. 
But relaxation, simply by allowing the body to slow down, sit still, breathe. Simply take your mind away from the chatter of, of, of regrets of the past or worries about the future and just, just be still. That brings you into this present moment. And when you're in this present moment, then you go on to the next step, which is concentration, not the furrowed brow, but simply the idea of focusing your intention and attention on a truth principle. Focusing your intention and attention on a truth principle. So let's say you're in a situation where you are maybe having a financial issue. It does no good to say, dear God, please send me money, pay this bill for me. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> Don't work that way. But what it helps us to do is to remember that this is a limitless and abundant universe. This is a limitless and abundant universe. And you say, well, what good does that do to help me pay the bills? We can't get to that. Just hang in there. But maybe that's the truth that you want to affirm. In God, there is only abundance. So we relax and we concentrate. We hold our attention and intention on that. And then we go into meditation. And when we think of meditation, you know, often we have, we, we, we may picture, you know, what we do on Sunday morning, or we may, you know, some of you might practice some other forms of meditation. All of those are simply trying to get us to the place of what the Buddhists call non-awareness. And what non-awareness is, is the idea of slipping behind what the five senses and our brain tells us to that place of deep consciousness where time does not exist, where location does not exist. There's no here, there's no there, there's no then, there's no when. There is allness and nothingness. There's the oneness. There is pure consciousness. That's the state of non-awareness. And our brains can't get us there just by thinking it. We've got to get to that place of stillness, get to that place of being grounded in the truth. And, 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 and by sitting in it, just sitting in it, we just might slip into that place of non-awareness. An interesting thing about that place of non-awareness is we don't know we've been there till we came back from it, right? Because when you think about it, the, the way we human beings operate is that we, we need a focal point, we need a frame of reference, I'm here, you're there, you know, we need a frame of reference. But in this place of pure non-awareness, of pure consciousness, there is no frame of reference, there's nothing and yet everything. It's a, a kind of weird paradox going on. So we may not be aware that we got to it until after the fact. But then once we get to it, we may have a realization. A realization, a deep inner knowing. Uh, our, our Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, husband of Myrtle, he says, realization is that deep inner conviction and assurance of the fulfillment of an ideal a deep inner conviction and assurance. When we know that we know that we know. When we get to that place of such deep certainty of a resolution or of, of whatever the issue is that we were holding that we don't worry about it. There's that sense of calm, release. We feel so much lighter. And we may suddenly have some idea of what is ours to do. And it's an idea that was there all the time. It wasn't that God gave us an idea. We allowed ourselves to be still and notice the divine idea that had been there all along. Because remember, in that state of consciousness and oneness, there is no giving or taking. There is no not there, there. It's, it's, it's omnipresence everything. And then we go to gratitude. Gratitude is that idea of opening our hearts and making room. 
and before there's any outward change in our life or even of ourselves, gratitude has to take place. When we read the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000, the first thing he did was when he got the two loaves and the fishes is that he blessed them and he gave thanks. And in unity, we don't debate if that literally happened or not, but what we say in our, in our lives, the metaphysical idea for us is that gratitude opens up us. And when we are open, we can experience what we would call a miracle, but I just call it the natural effect of what we've been doing. One day we will stop being surprised that this stuff actually works. <laughs> you know, we do it and it works and we're all like, oh, well, it's a miracle. No, it's not. It's you, what happens. One day we will stop being surprised. Let's practice this. Let's practice this prayer, this prayer process. I'm in teacher mode today. I'm telling you, now we're going to practice it, then I'm going to give you homework. <laughs> I know, they're all like, oh, man, homework. So, think of a situation, an issue that generally you would say, I want to pray for this, or you would ask somebody to pray for it, pray for you, or pray for another person. Okay, so just take a moment, think of something. You can invite you if you're comfortable, close your eyes. You don't have to, but it helps with the relaxation. So that first step of relaxation, simply breathe. Allow yourself to be still. I find that if I'm not comfortable closing my eyes, it helps to have a focal point. So maybe the candle up here, the flame. And just allow your body to be still. And what's a truth principle that might apply to your situation. Perhaps you're dealing with a physical illness. A truth affirmation would be, in God there is only wholeness. If it's a financial situation, perhaps in God there's only abundance. Allow your mind, your intention, your attention to just sit with that truth. And allow yourself to slip into a few moments of absolute stillness and quiet. Repeating that truth silently. Let it take you into that place, into the silence. Allowing yourselves to come to that place of deep knowing that regardless of how things may appear, regardless of the situation, that that truth, that divine truth underlies it all. And in doing so, you have a renewed experience of yourself you have a renewed experience of life. And with that, you give thanks. With an open heart and a smile on your face, you give thanks. And giving thanks is not thank you, God, but giving thanks is ah, that heart open and joy. Yes, it is done. I invite you to open your eyes and know we went through that quickly, but on your own, this is your homework. On your own, take as much time as you need in this and for this. Try it at least three times this week. I will be asking you if you did. <laughs> three times. This week at our, at our World Day of Prayer event, starting on September 10th, when we do the prayer vigil, this is what the folks who are 
uh, leading the prayer vigil. This is what they'll be doing with all those names you submit. They're not praying for the names. They're praying from a consciousness of God about the names. Do you hear the difference? We're not praying for some magical intercession. We are praying from the consciousness of God that the folks on these prayer lists come to that realization that, yes, the presence of God is working and active in their life as well. That's the practice of prayer. And the life of prayer is simply, in every moment, we live from that realization. Live from that realization that there's nothing we have to do, there's nothing we have to ask for, that the very presence and power that is God is us as well, that everything that happens in our life is an opportunity for us to step up and be that love of God, to be that presence of God, to be that power of God. When we live from that place, that's when, that's when your life becomes a prayer. That is living prayer. That is your life is your message. That's the praying without ceasing. That's what that is. So you can step into the practice. You can step into the life. You can do both. And when we do that, that's when transformation of ourselves and the world really happens. And that's when those when or where were you when questions get a little different because we see hope manifest and the questions turn into where were you when the Berlin Wall came down? Where were you when Nelson Mandela took his first steps to freedom? Where were you when we elected our first black president? Where will you be when we end disease? Where will you be when there is true equality for all, regardless of race, gender, orientation, identification? Where will you be when there is peace in the world? Because you see, when we pray from a consciousness of God about these things, it is already done. We just get to wait for the rest of the world to catch up. That is why we pray. Namaste.